Welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor where we're going to talk about the relationship between torque and angular acceleration. And the best way to really talk about and explain what I'm trying to talk about here is to go ahead and, and do it by way of, of some uh, recall here. You all should remember F is equal to MA, right, which is Newton's law of motion, right? So you have the force is equal to mass times the acceleration, okay? Now recall that um, the, the torque tau is kind of like an angular force. It's a force that's sort of used to push something through an angle. So the question is, what would this equation look like if you were to express it in terms of torque and in terms of angular acceleration? And the answer is that the torque is going to equal to something called the moment of inertia, which I'll explain in a second, times the angular acceleration. So this equation looks quite different. It can look a little bit scary at first, but just bear with me and you'll understand. The torque is just simply kind of like an angular force. That's what I've already explained what torque is. It's the force that you're exerting on something to make it rotate, okay? Whereas this is the force to push something. So this part, these guys are very similar. They're both forces, okay? Here is called the linear acceleration that something goes down the road with. This is the angular acceleration that is the result of you pushing something through an angle with a force uh, or with a torque tau. So this, we've already learned, is the angular acceleration. So, without me telling you anything else about what this moment of inertia is, you should probably be able to guess by analogy from this equation here what it probably represents. This is called the moment of inertia. And basically, it, uh, it is sort of a representation of the mass of a body. Okay, sort of. Um, it, it, it represents how the mass is distributed um, within a body. And let me, um, let me go ahead and explain what I'm talking about there by means of an example. Let's say you have uh, two, two bars, okay? What I'm going to do is a thought experiment here to explain to you what the moment of inertia is. Imagine that you have a bar, okay, and it's some kind of tube, okay? You can't see inside of it and you really don't know what's inside of it, but I'm going to show you what's inside of it here. Here's the first bar, okay, it's about this long, some length L. Now inside of it, all of the mass is concentrated here. So there's a big block of copper in here, with something really heavy, okay, inside here. And out here and out here is relatively hollow. So you're going to have to use your imagination with me here. Well, let me just, let me just stop here and draw a second bar. The second bar is going to be the exact same length. It's going to look exactly the same on the outside. However, in this bar, there's going to be some heavy mass over here and some heavy mass over here. But in between here, this is going to be absolutely hollow with nothing but air inside of there. Now, I think hopefully you'll be able to understand that you have to use your imagination. But if you had a bar that was absolutely hollow out here, but very heavy in the center, when you kind of rotate it, you know, it's going to feel differently than the bar here, because if you rotate it here, the, the mass is going to be distributed on the ends, and it'll kind, of, it'll kind of resist your motion a little bit more. It'll kind of be a, probably a little bit harder to, to move, because they, it's going to be like two big barbells out on the